a lot of the states that we do loans in, um, they have transfer taxes. Um, so uh, Mark prepared a slide, he's passed it out to you. And um, it's very important that um, that you know what states have transfer taxes, what the multiplier is, uh, who's the customer for who to pay what, um, and how that affects the concessions on the contract. Um, so there's a lot that goes into this. And um, the reason why it's so important, um, I can just tell you why. Um, the first loan that I did that was outside of Texas uh, was in Florida and had transfer taxes. I didn't, I didn't know what they were. And I did my 3% concessions like I always do, you know, $150,000 loan um, or what I thought was needed. And um, got to uh, got to closing and said buyer had to bring like, you know, four grand to closing. And we're doing a zero down loan. And I had no idea what to do. And so, um, so I, I kissed my kid, uh, commission goodbye on that loan and had to give it all up and um, had to, uh, it's called a cure. And so, um, and what happens is if you um, incorrectly disclose to the borrower, it's not, oops, I'm sorry, let me fix that. You're done. Okay. You can't change it at that point. So um, somebody's got to pay for it. Um, so the thing is that I learned real quick that you need to find out what transfer taxes are and they're expensive. They're not just not $50. These are a few thousand dollars. So we're in, and so again, it depends on the size of the loan because there's a multiplier involved. Um, so we just need to make sure now that, I mean, that was a long time ago. We're not, you know, testing things anymore. Um, and that's how I look at it. It was a lesson, but obviously we don't want you guys to have to go through that. And so you need to pay attention to that and know what state, you know, requires these transfer taxes and who's paying what, because it affects, affects the loan. So Mark has done some research on it um, and he's got a presentation. And so um, go ahead and let's, let's talk about it. Great. So um, what Angel was saying, you know, transfer taxes, um, typically, you know, you're going to think of them like a sales tax. And you can just kind of put that in your mind when you're trying to think, you know, you know what are they? Um, as Angela mentioned, there they are going to be part of the closing costs in certain in, in certain situations. Um, you can just kind of look down this this uh, this sheet that I've given you, um, and you're going to see some examples, and we're going to go through those in detail. Um, there are different multipliers that he was mentioning, uh, and actually in the email that we received today, that with with each of the states. Different states are going to have different multipliers. In this case, we're going to be using, uh, I just, you know, we're using an example from Florida. Um, so, you know, you, you can you can kind of follow along here. Um, basically, with transfer taxes, there, there's there's three key things we're going to go over here. Uh, the first one of those is the doc stamps on the deed. Okay, so with doc stamps on the deed, uh, that's going to be based on the sales price. This particular line item is going to be is going to come up on closing costs. Uh, it's based on the sales price. It's typically paid by the seller, not in all cases. Uh, in this Florida example, um, we're doing an example price all the way through here, sales price of one ninety five nine ten. That's one hundred ninety five thousand dollars nine hundred one thousand nine hundred uh, one ninety five nine ten. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to figure out your doc stamps on the deed, what we're going to do is first we're going to divide one ninety five nine ten by a hundred. That's going to give us Rustin. Um, by, I'm sorry, by 100? Right. 19, 59, 10. Okay. So we've done that math. Um, at that point, the law requires that you take that, uh, that, that anything to the right of the decimal. And regardless of what it is, it's not like typical math where you would do it five or higher. You're going to take anything to the right of the decimal and you're going to round that up. So in this case, what that one, uh, that 19, 59, 10 ends up being is 1,960. So for the state of Florida, you would actually have to look this up on your list where I'm getting on the next line, uh, 1960 times 0.7. Where does 0.7 come from? That's Florida's multiplier for doc stamps on the deed. It'll be different for, for other states. Mm -hmm. So you take the 1960 times 0 0.7, that's 0 0.7. You're going to come out with 1372. So on the, tr on the, uh, on the, the um, closing costs, um, this will be listed as 1372 as your doc stamps on the deed. 
So is it is it always the sales price divided by 100 and then times the multiplier? Mm -hmm. is that right, how it works it's going to be divided by 100 and then whatever the state's multiplier is. Okay, now, right. um, uh, for, for, for those of you guys listening at home, uh, we're going to also include the, uh, uh, the sheet here with the breakdown so you'll be able to analyze that. Um, but now, who's who's usually paying for this in this transaction? In this part, the, in this part, it's typically the, the seller. Okay. So or the doc stamps on the so deed. So doc stamps on the deed is, is generally paid by the seller. So um, Sean, you're getting ready to sell a house. The buyer may ask you, "Hey, can you pay this for me? This transfer tax doesn't mean you have to do it, but generally you may do it as sure. part of a you know uh, reasonable customary for the state of Florida. Sure. It doesn't mean that you're obligated. So I've seen many deals where the buyer pays it all, and so it, it just depends. And so normally the seller does pay it, but that's an important thing that, uh, yeah, it is very important. If you're, if you're buying a foreclosure, normally it's going to be tough to get concessions. You know, it could, you could, but, it, you know, normally they don't, they don't, you know, it's an as-is deal. So, um, so. Do we want to find out before they go into contract? Of Who's, course. Who's, of course, you have before to, they write it out. Yeah, that deal you have in Miami, or whatever, you have yeah. to know that. I mean, yeah, the, you you need before anyone goes under contract, you need to have the right dates for closing, concessions, who's paying for what. I mean, all this is critical because you know you get a contract in and it's all screwed up, then it doesn't really matter. You know, you need to have a good contract in, and so, um, so you know that that's what matters. Um, okay. Okay, so the the uh, the next section of, of the three uh, is going to be the doc stamps on the note. Uh, again, doc stamps on the note is based on something. In this case, it's based on the loan amount, not the sales price. Um, and this is typically going to be paid for by the buyer. Mm. Okay. Doc stamps on the note. Uh, so this is something that uh, would be you know something you'd want to have covered in concessions, obviously, because it's typically paid by, by the buyer. Um, it, it's something that you know is, is obviously important in that respect. Again, our example in Florida, we're going to use the same sales price, one hundred ninety-five thousand nine hundred ten dollars. In this case, we're going to assume that the, that the buyer is uh, putting down some money on the home. Um, so his his total loan amount in this case is going to be one hundred forty-five thousand four hundred four dollars. So the way we're going to figure out the doc stamp of the note, again, we're going to take in this case because doc stamp of the note is based on the loan amount. We're going to take that loan amount of 145,404. Again, divide that by 100, and that gives us 1454,04. Again, we've got something to the right of the decimal, regardless of the fraction it is. You have to round up. So, in this case, we're going to take that, turn that into 1455. Then the multiplier for Florida for doc stamp on the note is 14. Is excuse me, 0.35. So it's 1455 mm -hmm. times 0.35 gives you Five hundred and nine dollars and twenty-five cents. That's going to be a line item in closing, um, and again, that is typically paid by the buyer. So that's something you're going to want to try to get covered uh, in concessions. Okay. And then uh, number three is uh, yes. Uh, the, the third part here to this uh, is the intangible tax. Um, it's based on again, like Doc Stamp the note is based on the loan amount. But it's only on new loans, so you know, be careful when you're dealing with assumed loans. If it's an assumed loan, which probably wouldn't mess with much, no, but no. we're not going to do them. But uh, just just for your for your knowledge, uh, intangible tax does not apply on assumed loans, uh, and that's just for your for your general knowledge uh, as a loan officer. Okay, now, when you say new loan, do you mean like a new home or just no? A new uh, meaning a new origination of a loan. So okay. you're taking out a, a new loan. Um, it's not like you're taking over the loan for someone else. It's not an assumption of loan. It is a new loan in your name. Uh, okay. New origination. Okay, so the, the, we would probably always see that then. I mean, we would always probably see this tax. In yes. This. Okay. Exactly. Uh, intangible. Yeah, you're going to see it for for our purposes and what we do in originating. So if a uh, if the state has a transfer tax, are all three of these included in every state, or just a few of these? No, are not they? they're not. Not each state requires or has all three. Some of them have two. Some of them okay. have three. Um, and so on the uh, Excel spreadsheet that we have, it shows which states require what okay. and what the names of them are and the multiplier. Gotcha. And so, uh, so now to calculate your intangible tax, again, with our example in Florida, and again, with our same loan amount of 145,404, um, what you're going to do is multiply this by 0 0.002. In this case, that comes out to $290. 0 0.808, 
you're going to do typical mathematical rounding in this case. Since we have, you're going to go to the third digit, you're going to do typical mathematical because you can't write a check for 290.808, right? So you're going to, instead of the, uh, you know, anything to the right, um, you know, of the decimal, we're going to do typical mathematical rounding and the line item is going to appear for $290.81. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, Again, this is, you know, we always want to do these quick takeaways for you guys, so that way we make sure that you understand, you know, what you're doing. And so every every day we want to have a quick one. We don't need to have it for two hours, but this is something that, you know, it's going to expand your bandwidth and your knowledge, and um, some that's also very important um, when you're dealing with certain loans. Not every state has transfer taxes. Um, a lot of states do. Um, so you want to make sure that um, you have the correct, uh, the correct, you know, multipliers, and and that way, when you're, you know, um, working on getting a contract in, that that it's all in sync. Because if it's not, it could turn into a mess. And so we try to prevent that as much as possible uh, by giving you the knowledge and the awareness. And so, uh, thank you, Mark. For um, can you scan that to me, please? Yeah, here you have this copy. Okay. Are you, you want an email? Yeah, yeah. If you don't mind. No problem. Okay. All right. Can you press stop on that? Um, who is not?